Hello, I don't believe we've been introduced. White Fruit, assistant to the regional manager here in the channel. And I'm your new trustworthy best friend. How do you know if you can trust me and if I'm honest? Well, I'm about to reveal the conspiracies of the guitar industry. Question, have you ever wondered if those other fancy pickups are much better than the ones you have? And what's up with those overdrive pedals? Do those others sound any different than yours? Well, they don't. And I have proof. Thanks, Dwight. Now, uh, go back to your office, please. So what is going on today? I honestly have so much to say that I don't really know where to start. And I really do not want this to be a one hour long blabbering uh, about the subject. But there are some very important things that I want to put out. Uh, well, first of all, what I will do is show you my method when I'm comparing stuff. Um, and with my method, I mean different things that I focus on when it's a clean guitar tone, uh, a slightly overdriven, crunchy, whatever guitar tone, or a high gain tone for heavy rock styles and metal and everything. Because you do focus on different things for these uh, different guitar sound types. Uh, whether it's uh, a guitar comparison or a pedal, an amp, whatever we're talking about. Why am I even talking about this and why do I want to share this? Well, uh, mostly because it appears to me that it's much cooler nowadays to show how similar stuff can sound uh, just for the sake of more views and more success. Unfortunately, if someone reveals a conspiracy, whether it's existing or not, it's automatically a trustworthy person for many because, wow, he dares to say that or, uh, wow, I never knew that. Thanks for telling me. It's a, a little bit of a, a cheap trick. Uh, and it's also a little dangerous too, because it convinces a lot of people that whatever you play, whatever you choose, it doesn't matter. It will all sound the same and just take whatever, you know, doesn't really doesn't matter. Um, which, you know, there's some truth to that. And uh, we'll talk about that. But it can actually end up being an issue because that person who's been convinced that it really doesn't matter whatever you choose will get whatever <laughs> most probably something that's you know less expensive which makes sense that's what i would do and then stick to that and whether that person likes that guitar or amp or whatever it's gonna think like okay all of the others are gonna be the same experience to use so um I guess it's what it is. Um, and if um, it doesn't like it, it's just gonna ruin their experience of playing a the guitar. They might never come to the conclusion to compare it with something else that might sound similar, but feels radically different to play, depending on what you're playing through that amp or guitar, whatever that is. We'll talk about more of this later on. Let's start with the, the first round or guitar sound type, which is clean guitar tones. You should definitely try to play with dynamics if you're if you're comparing clean tones instead of just strumming Wonderwall or whatever or um, or just playing with the same exact amplitude and just do something like this. Mm -hmm. 
Because if, if you don't use any dynamics, you don't let notes ring out, you just play something, you know, like a, a rock ballad or a, a chilled out part of a metal song or whatever, that can sound pretty, but most of the clean amps will sound the same if you just do that. As soon as you play in the upper register, uh, you play single notes and some strumming, you let a, a low note ring out or just play with dynamics, you reveal much more of the, uh, the amp's character, really. Very important when you show an amp that has a very nice clean tone. Most guitar players will not just play that clean tone. If you get an amp that's a clean amp, you need to know, or you need to show, if anyone's watching you, um, how that reacts to certain drives and effects and how much headroom it has, if you crank it, etc. Like, there's so many little things that matter much more than this tone. Second thing is overdriven guitar tone comparisons. Again, this could be just the same rig and you compare guitars or you compare overdrive pedals or you, you compare to overdriving amplifiers. If you're comparing overdriven sounds, um, play with dynamics because you still have dynamics. It's not compressing too much. It's not a high gain tone. Uh, then, uh, then try to play palm muted stuff like lower frequency stuff to see how you know, that's maybe muddy or tight, or if you just can simply hear more low end or less low end frequencies. You've heard the intro playing, uh, thanks Dwight. Uh, I've helped him to set up the pedals this way to sound as similar as possible, even though these three pedals could not be further away from each other in terms of how they react to your playing. I was able to make them sound very similar too. And if you just show that, people will think, oh yeah, cool. These three pedals are freaking identical. It's like, is every drive pedal the same? It's like ridiculous. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I meant. They all do different things and they don't all do everything. <laughs> that might be confusing. So for example, the Rev Tilt is a much better overdrive if you use it for less gain than if you go for a higher gain tone. But it also sounds amazing in front of an over, already overdriving amp or in front of another overdrive. It just does the boosting into something story so well, much better than the other pedals. Uh, for example, the Royal Flush has much creamier uh, mid-range and less sparkle than the Toxic Twins. If you like the creamier tone and, I don't know, play lots of single chord guitars and don't want the crazy sparkle because your amp is already super, you know, presency, then that's much better than the Toxic Twins. If you like a very wide, super balanced tone, uh, which is something you can get from the Toxic Twins, you would be disappointed um, with the others. It's just, a, you know, they have their strengths and they do react to your playing in a very different way. If someone said, hey, listen to that intro playing, they all sound the same and you bought whichever, you might have just bought the wrong pedal for you. And that is what makes me really, well, I wouldn't say angry, but <sighs> makes me facepalm when someone says, they all sound the same. Okay, and now let's talk about high gain tones and comparisons. What I would definitely do, even though I don't consider myself being like the most ideal person for high gain guitar tones, if you want that, go 
um, and check out all our England's videos. Uh, what an absolute legend and um, I love the dude. Um, or Rabia Massad, if you're into more modern, uh, sort of progressive, um, uh, low to low to high gain. High gain tones have so much information, so many transients and, and uh, overtones and everything. It's just such a busy, compressed signal uh, that you have to have, for example, a palm muting shootout. Like do just a few notes, really, just two bars until your ears get used to that, what you're hearing, and then play the exact same thing with another guitar or with an, through another amp, whatever you're comparing. Um, that's how you can actually tell how the mid-range uh, changes, you know, the, the most recognizable frequency just jumps down or up on the frequency range. Or if one is tighter than the other, if we're talking about two amps or two guitars with different pickups. Because of its nature, if you're talking about a high gain tone, um, the amp and the, the speaker will matter most because those are the last in the signal chain. It's that simple. And if you change the gain structure, which is coming from the amp, uh, that changes a lot. If you change the guitar in front of all that um, compression and all those harmonics blooming and everything in the amp, just swap the guitar or just change the pickups in the same guitar, you will not hear a huge difference. The audience will not hear a huge difference. And that is, I think, the crucial part, especially for high gain. But I would do this for all rounds, like when you're comparing clean stuff or uh, lower gain stuff. If I don't get to know what the player feels when playing these different whatever guitars or amps or whatever we're talking about uh, it's just half the story because a good player can make most stuff sound the same unless they tell how easy it was to get there or how much fight they had to make it work that way or sound that way i i don't know it because I'm just, I'm just listening to it. So I think it's super important as told for all kinds of comparisons to give some sort of an insight. If we don't know how the player felt playing, I don't know, a PV5150 compared to a rectifier, we just hear the sound, but we don't know that he had a really easy time playing the 5150 because it's a much tighter amp compared to the Mesa, where, where you really have to pay attention to where you palm mute to make it sound any tight, unless you put a tube screamer in front of it, but that's a different story. These are little things that matter so much when you actually go out there and spend your money on something. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you need to be aware of all those things and then buy the most expensive stuff. <laughs> it's in many cases, absolutely not necessary. Um, you can get really, really good stuff, like even plugins that play like a dream. Um, it's just very important, I think, to let the viewer know how it felt. And of course, you can argue with that not being a part of the tone. So if we're talking about a tone comparison, what the player feels is you know, whatever, doesn't matter. Well, it is relevant because we're still comparing gear, not just whatever, you know, theories. We're talking about things that people will, at the end of the day, consider going out and buying. And that is our responsibility. That player's perspective is not, not being discussed in many of these videos, which is literally 50% of the story. This, the sound you're getting is what should be the producer's concern. And a kind reminder, don't take YouTube videos too seriously, including this channel, obviously. Whatever you see, whatever someone claims can be interesting, you know, listen to it if you're interested in whatever that person has to say. But don't say like, ah, oh, wow, now I know it better. I'm, you know, I'm convinced. Don't, don't be convinced know about stuff and try them out yourself because everyone will make a mistake whether it's a, a conscious one for more views or just a mistake like literally forgetting something or even stating something falsely which happens with me as well it's uh it's too bad but it happens don't don't take these videos too seriously just enjoy them they're entertaining they can be educational 
but do do the math yourself. Try stuff out yourself. It's such a different situation. And that is what you should believe, not what I or anyone else says. Meet you down there in the comments. Let me know what you think about all these shootouts and about revealing secrets of the industry and all those things. You guys take it easy. See you next time in a new video. Bye-bye.